In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess. God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen.
let us pray. O God, who teach us that you abide in hearts that are just and true, grant that we may be so fashioned by your grace as to become a dwelling pleasing to you. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Leviticus. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron, if someone has on his skin a scab or postule or blotch, which appears to be the sore of leprosy, he shall be brought to Aaron, the priest, or to one of the priests among his descendants. If the man is leprous and unclean, the priest shall declare him unclean by reason of the sore on his head. The one who bears the sore of leprosy shall keep his garments rent and his head bare and shall muffle his beard. He shall cry out, unclean, unclean. As long as the sore is on him, he shall declare himself unclean since he is in fact unclean. He shall dwell apart, making his abode outside the camp. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, whether you eat or drink or whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. Avoid giving offense, whether to the Jews or Greeks or the Church of God, just as I try to please everyone in every way not seeking my own benefit, but that of the many, that they may be saved. Be imitators of me, as I am of Christ. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. A leper came to Jesus and kneeling down, begged him and said, If you wish, you can make me clean. Moved with pity, he stretched out his hand, touched him, and said to him, I do will it, be made clean. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Then, warning him sternly, he dismissed him at once, He said to him, see that you tell no one anything, but go, show yourself to the priest, and offer for your cleansing what Moses prescribed. That will be proof for them. The man went away and began to publicize the whole matter. He spread the report abroad so it was impossible for Jesus to enter a town openly. He remained outside in deserted places, and people kept coming to him from everywhere. The Gospel of the Lord. Confronted by a contagious disease with frightful consequences, an entire people protect themselves from illness by social distancing, by isolating the infected, by mandating special clothing, and by shaming and shunning those who will not cooperate with this approach to public health. I speak, of course, 
about leprosy. But after our experience of the coronavirus pandemic, perhaps we are a bit better equipped to understand the ancient measures which separated lepers from everyone else and to appreciate, therefore, the extraordinary appeal of a man who could cut through fear and danger, heal the sick, and restore to human fellowship and to divine worship those who had been expelled from both because of their disease. That is why a leper knelt before Jesus and begged him for healing. The Lord was moved with pity, and Mark tells us that Jesus stretched out his hand and touched the leper. If Christ had been a man only, then this touch would have rendered Jesus himself unclean. But instead, the Lord Jesus revealed his divine glory through his mastery over nature, and he healed the man. The leprosy left him immediately, and he was made clean. Holy Scripture always speaks to us at multiple levels and with several meanings. And to understand any text in the Bible, we must distinguish between the literal and the spiritual meanings of each text. In addition to the obvious and literal sense of Scripture, our theological tradition counts three other spiritual senses or meanings, and they are called the allegorical sense, the moral sense, and the mystical or anagogical sense. First, the allegorical sense allows us to understand the meaning of one event by reference to another. For example, the children of Israel crossed from slavery to freedom by passing through the waters of the Red Sea, and Christians do the same through the waters of holy baptism. Second, the moral sense allows us to understand that the words of Scripture teach us how to live in righteousness, a teaching which can shape our lives in the truth. For example, St. Paul gives such instruction today in the second lesson when he writes, whatever you do, do everything for the glory of God. And third, the mystical or anagogical sense from the Greek word for leading helps us understand how everything in Holy Scripture leads us to the glory of sharing the divine life of the Trinity. For example, the church on earth is the seed and beginning of the heavenly Jerusalem, which is our true homeland and eternal destiny. And so our life in the church now, however messy it may be, is a preparation for everlasting life. In today's gospel, we find both the literal sense and all three spiritual senses of scripture at work at the same time. Leprosy was a terrible disease beyond the skill of medical science to cure until very recently. And so Christ's healing of the leper was the literal restoration to health of one particular man who was otherwise doomed to a living death. But in this one action of Christ are also contained three universal spiritual meanings for us. First, sin is a disease, a spiritual illness that separates us from God and from authentic human fellowship. And the sickness of sin subjects us to dreadful consequences that can easily spread to others as we contaminate them with our selfishness. Second, only Christ can cure us from sin sickness, and so we must turn to him with faith, hope, and love to be made clean. But this requires of us that we first acknowledge that our sins are sins, and that in our sins we are unclean. No sin is forgiven even by God until it is acknowledged to be a sin and confessed as such by the sinner. Third, if we acknowledge our sins and turn to the Lord for mercy and healing, then we are immediately cleansed and restored to fellowship with God, with all others, and with our own true selves. In this way, 
we are being prepared by the Lord both to join the communion of the saints in glory on the last day and to announce the gospel of salvation in our day. And so the psalmist proclaims, Blessed the man to whom the Lord imputes not guilt, in whose spirit there is no guile. I acknowledged my sin to you, my guilt I covered not. I said, I confess my faults to the Lord, and you took away the guilt of my sin. Be glad in the Lord and rejoice, you just. Exult, all you upright of heart. Friends, let us be mindful of all four of these meanings of Scripture as we begin this Wednesday our annual journey to Jerusalem, the 40 days of penance and prayer during which we are called to examine our lives in the light of gospel truth. Then, in the light of that truth, we can confess our sins, receive forgiveness, and be conformed ever more perfectly by grace, through faith, hope, and love, to the life, death, and resurrection of the only one who can heal us and restore us to the dignity and freedom of the children of God. He is the Messiah of Israel and the divine Redeemer of the world, the Lord, Jesus Christ. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us turn to the Lord with faith and pray for all our needs. For all bishops, priests, and deacons, that with the deep conviction of their own conversion, they will proclaim the gospel in season and out. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For all the baptized, that they may be instruments of grace for others and witnesses to the truth of the gospel. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For the men and women of our armed forces and emergency services, that they may be preserved from all harm. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. For peace in our hearts and peace among nations, 
that wars may cease and all may serve the common good. Christ, hear us. Christ, graciously hear us. And for all the dead, that they may see the face of God and live. Christ, hear us. Heavenly Father, you desire that none should be lost and all should be saved. Strengthen us in holiness by word and sacrament that we may lead all we meet to saving faith in our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A warm welcome to all visitors, especially Father Darius Valagora, a priest of the Archdiocese of Vienna and a student of canon law at my alma mater, the Gregorian University in Rome, from which he is on break to visit friends in the States, including our own Father Fry. Bryce Stanfield, a 21-year-old student athlete at Furman University, died suddenly last week several of his friends and teammates are here today. Forty-three years ago, the sudden death of a college friend of mine, a 19-year-old vigorous athlete, was an essential part of my conversion to Christ, thus confirming that the victory of the cross always brings life from death. May the Lord of mercies be gracious to his servant Bryce and to all his family and friends all of whom are lifted up at this Mass to the throne of grace. As you leave the church today, you will find volunteers holding large soup pots for our Super Bowl collection to assist Catholic charities in serving those in need. Thank you for your generosity. Lent begins this week on Ash Wednesday, a day of fasting and abstinence, and we will have Mass at 7 a.m., 12 noon, and 7 p.m. Please remember that no one can cross the interior of our campus on a school day. So if you are coming to the morning or noon mass, please park on Washington Street in our main lot to the west side of the church or on O'Connell Field. Finally, offer to God a sacrifice of thanksgiving and make good your vows to the Most High.
pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May this oblation, O oh Lord, we pray, cleanse and renew us, and may it become for those who do your will the source of eternal reward through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for out of compassion for the waywardness that is ours, he humbled himself and was born of the Virgin. By the passion of the cross, he freed us from unending death. And by rising from the dead, he gave us life eternal. And so, with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing a hymn of your glory, as with our end we acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, 
a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you a thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O oh Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, Grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin, Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed Apostle, with his spouse, Saint Joseph, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant, Francis, our Pope, and Jacques, our Bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you in your compassion, O merciful Father. Gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to at their passing from this life, 
give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, our glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Having fed upon these heavenly delights, we pray, O Lord, that we may always long for that food by which we truly live through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.